I made an animation as my model to explain how the cell membrane works and how digestive cells in the intestines absorb amino acids. First of all, let's take a look at all the components in the cell membrane. The cell membrane itself is made of phospholipids, as seen here. A phospholipid has a hydrophilic head and two hydrophobic tails, thus making multiple phospholipid molecules to come together and form a bilayer. This structure is called fluid mosaic, meaning that the phospholipids are free to move around, but they stay together as a surface. Things can pass through the bilayer easily if they are soluble in lipids. In between the phospholipids of the bilayer, there are cholesterol molecules, which stabilizes the bilayer by keeping phospholipids at relatively normal distances from each other. When it is too cold, cholesterol keeps the phospholipids apart, so it is still fluid. When it is too hot, cholesterol keeps the phospholipids together, so the bilayer doesn't fall apart. And then we have glycolipids. Glycolipids are carbohydrate molecules attached to the phospholipids, hence the name glyco and lipid. Glycolipids act as identifiers of the cell, and the carbohydrate molecules are recognizable by other cells. For example, when a phagocyte senses a glycolipid that is specific to a bacterium, it'll be triggered to destroy that bacterium immediately. Sometimes these glycolipids are also called antigens. Glycoproteins are carbohydrate molecules attached to peripheral proteins. They're responsible for cell cohesion and acting as receptors. These are transmembrane proteins. They are also known as integral proteins. They're essential for transport. For different materials, transport methods differ. Some transports take energy, some do not. For transport that does not take energy, materials move from a higher concentration to a lower concentration naturally. For transport that do take energy, transport proteins use energy from ATP, which are molecules that store energy in their phosphate groups. Simple soluble molecules like oxygen and carbon dioxide can move freely across the membrane. However, some molecules are not soluble in lipids, and they need proteins to help. They're brought into the cytoplasm by facilitated diffusion. This is a carrier protein. When a material binds with it, it changes shape and spits out the material into the cytoplasm, and then its shape changes back. This process does not take energy. It is an example of a facilitated diffusion. This is an aquaporin. It is shaped like a channel. As the name implies, it allows water molecules to pass through. Since the insides of the bilayer is hydrophobic, water is unable to pass through the membrane naturally. That is why an aquaporin is needed. The transport of water is called osmosis. This is an ion pump. This specific ion pump pumps sodium ions from the inside of the cytoplasm to the exterior of the cell with the energy from ATP. There are other ion pumps too, like proton pumps, which pumps hydrogen ions. Ion pumps are essential in a process called co-transport. Co-transport involves two proteins that work together to transport one molecule. In this case, I'll be explaining how amino acid is being transported through the cell membrane. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, which are building blocks of our bodies. They are essential to life because proteins play important roles such as performing enzymic reactions and providing structural support. We acquire proteins by taking amino acids from the proteins of other organisms. So, the digestion of amino acids requires two proteins, a transport protein and an ion pump. Since the transport protein does not work without a sodium ion, an ion pump is required to perform this transport. First of all, the ion pump pumps sodium ions outside the cell, creating a higher concentration of sodium ions outside the cell than the inside of the cell. Because of the concentration difference, the ion binds with the transport protein and changes its shape to fit an amino acid. The amino acid then binds with the transport protein. When both the sodium ion and the amino acid are in place, the transport protein changes shape once again and spits out the amino acid and the sodium ion in the inside of the cell. The transport is complete. The transport protein can change shape to its original form, 
ready to perform another transport. When digesting proteins, the uptake of dipeptides and tripeptides also happens sometimes. But the transport of anything above tripeptides do not happen through co-transport because these molecules are too large. They're probably transported through endocytosis instead. For dipeptides and tripeptides, hydrogen ions are used in a co-transport process.